Frozen 2 is finally here, and among all the epic scenes, new songs, and great adventures are a ton of hidden moments and easter eggs. Time to thaw these frozen treats out as we uncover hidden Disney references, a fun connection to the band Queen, and a great tie-in to Gravity Falls. Quick warning, there are some major Frozen 2 spoilers ahead, so you've been warned. Forgive me, maturity is making me poetic. <laughs> Despite taking place three years after the first Frozen, the film is still filled with plenty of flashbacks, including the opening scenes where we see a young Anna and Elsa playing together. Instead of the standard toys, the little girls enjoy some time with snowman figurines. But Elsa's design skills are clearly way ahead of her time. While she doesn't create a Pixar Pizza Planet truck, she was able to make a snowman that resembles Baymax from Big Hero 6. Baymax's similar design fits right in with the little snow creatures. Keep your eyes peeled for a small Totoro character among the snow designs as well. And if you like the Baymax easter egg, it's not the only Big Hero 6 reference in the movie. Stay tuned until the end to see another one. One of the newest characters we get to meet in Frozen 2 is Ryder. The young man was born in the Enchanted Forest and has a similar love for reindeers as Kristoff. The name wasn't chosen randomly either. Ryder is actually named after Chris Buck's son, Ryder, who tragically passed away in a car accident back in 2013. The dedication to his son is a touching moment and a way for his son's name to live on forever. When Frozen won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature back in 2014, the closing line from Chris Buck's acceptance speech was also a touching tribute to his son. Frozen 2 isn't a Marvel movie, but the film is on board with the whole post-credits trend, something that started with the first Frozen movie as well. Sitting through the end credits of the sequel isn't too bad though because the movie features some great song covers with artists like Panic at the Disco, Casey Musgraves, and Weezer providing their own unique takes on songs like Into the Unknown. Anyways, once you're done jamming out, Olaf makes his big return and greets us with a recap of the film we just saw. The high-speed storytelling is very similar to Michael Pena's role in Ant-Man, and the post credit scene also features a fun reveal with Marshmallow and the Snow Geese. The Snow Geese have not been forgotten since they debuted in the Disney short Frozen Fever, keeping the whole world of Frozen all connected. One of Elsa's big songs in Frozen 2 is Into the Unknown. The song helps set her off on her journey and provides us with plenty of lyrics to sing along with. In the movie, the song is also filled with all kinds of great visuals, including one hidden Mickey that appears in a blink and you miss it moment. When Elsa draws an ice circle on the ground, focus on the circle for a moment and you'll spot two more suddenly appearing. Those two circles help form the perfect Mickey head. And this isn't the only hidden Mickey found in the movie either. Later on, we'll reveal another one that you might have missed. Sticking with Elsa's singing, let's flash forward to near the end of the movie when Elsa discovers the secret land her mother used to sing about in lullabies. As Elsa's memories take the form of snow and ice, she passes by an animated version of herself, walking and singing, let it go. So does Elsa sing along and have a grand duet with her icy counterpart? Eh, not quite. She kind of rolls her eyes, cringes, and turns away from the let it go performance. On the surface, it may seem like Elsa is just a little bashful about her singing skills, but the reaction was kind of played off like a parent who has heard let it go just one too many times. The song has been oversaturated in the media over the last several years, and Elsa clearly showcases the cringed reaction people get when they've heard it just one too many times. While Frozen's time setting prevents a lot of modern day references, we do hear Anna use the word epic as a kid. And there's also a great reference to the band Queen. After struggling to propose to Anna, Kristoff decides to sing about his feelings in the song Lost in the Woods. Well, it turns out the song had all the vibes of an 80s music video, and one of the moments was a direct reference to the Queen song, Bohemian Rhapsody. In the Kristoff song, we see the background turn black, and as he sings, three deer surround him and provide the backup vocals. The same visual was used with Freddie Mercury and his band for their iconic music video. The nice moment takes things a step further by bringing even more deer into the next shot. Queen is not the only reference found in Lost in the Woods. Many parents will find plenty of laughs in the way Kristoff is displayed so overdramatically. The effects, slow motion, and flowing hair feels like the launch of MTV back in the 80s, even including a moment where he steps up to a pine cone 
much like a microphone. Besides Queen, the song and visual take a lot of cues from the 80s rock band Whitesnake. We're pretty sure reviews for their music video, Is This Love?, will increase as fans find so many fun visual connections to the classic song. In the video, the lead singer fawns over a girl who cannot see him, kinda like the same way Christoph pines for Anna, and she keeps disappearing. Young Anna made her big return in Frozen 2, but naturally the same young actress who voiced her would be a bit too old this time around. So who did the production turn to? Broadway! And specifically the Frozen Broadway show. In the musical, actress Mattia Conforti plays young Anna on stage, and she got the chance to reprise the role for the movie as well. Why have a huge casting call when there's a perfectly good stage Anna who could supply the voice? The connection was the perfect way to bridge the gap between both worlds, and Mattia definitely brings a lot of spirit to the character. What's another movie without another Olaf solo song? This time around, Olaf gets to sing the song, When I Am Older. And the animated snowman is actually one of the characters who goes through some of the biggest changes and growth in the film. Well, before those changes, we get to laugh with the little guy, and when his song concludes, there's a fun moment tied to classic Hollywood. Once the wind spirits calm down a bit, it wisps some leaves around Olaf, and he places his arms in front of his body. The pose and position of the leaves is an exact replica of the classic Marilyn Monroe pose, when her dress flew up in the air. The moment is even used for the official Olaf character poster. One of the more lighthearted scenes in the movie happens near the beginning, when the whole gang plays charades with each other. When Olaf's turn happens, we're all in for a treat as the snowman is able to transform himself multiple times for the speed round. At one point, he transforms into a castle, which looks like a basic form of the Cinderella castle, the iconic structure featured in every Disney park. Just a few moments later, he transforms into a mouse, cleverly using his coal for a nose in two years. Yep, you guessed it. That's the second hidden Mickey we found in the film. We're sure there's plenty more, so drop a comment if you found any others. So in Frozen 2, Elsa and the others travel to a mysterious forest filled with giants, lizards, and other dark secrets. Sounds a whole lot like another Disney property to us. The hit show, Gravity Falls. We're surprised Kristoff didn't stop off at a mystery shack. There's so many similarities. And don't worry, your ears aren't mistaking you if you thought you heard Dipper Pines roaming around the forest either. This is because voice actor Jason Ritter provides the voice of Ryder in the film, but his best known voice role has to be Dipper Pines. He didn't really alter his voice either. Sounding just like Dipper has been dropped into the world of Frozen. This was also Ritter's first voice role in a feature film, and we're all hoping his second will be some sort of Gravity Falls feature-length film. Frozen 2 manages some really fun callbacks to the hit songs from the first film. We already mentioned Elsa hearing Let It Go again, but Kristoff also starts off his song Lost in the Woods with a short reprise of Reindeers Are Better Than People. In the beginning of the movie, there's also a small moment when Anna and Elsa get ready for bed. Anna whispers to Elsa a suggestion that they build a snowman later that night. The small moment is a clear shout out to Do You Wanna Build a Snowman, a song that instantly gets stuck in your head just by hearing the title. We all know you're singing it right now. Go ahead, we are too. The big group number, Some Things Never Change, features a great feast among the community, as everyone gathers together in what we can only assume is some sort of Arendelle Thanksgiving. Well, pay close attention to all the food on the table, because many of the items are Scandinavian traditions. The big racks of lamb are a New Year's tradition in Sweden and Norway. There are a number of baked breads that are traditional to that area as well. The giant pumpkin on the table also represents the area's love for the food including pumpkin soups. The animators really went all out to provide accurate details and delicious foods that may make your stomach grumble while you enjoy the movie. And just a quick little reminder to subscribe to Screen Rant. Also, don't forget to turn on those notifications by clicking the little bell thingy. Using your phone? Turn on notifications through YouTube settings. We all know by this point how stubborn YouTube can be. Frozen 2 goes above and beyond to find connections with the first movie and provide a universe that feels real. A great example of this? Elsa's Ice Castle. As the main group of adventurers venture out for their adventure in the Enchanted Forest, look deep in the background to spot Elsa's Ice Castle. The castle still stands strong. The high mountain structure obviously doesn't get many high temperatures and has remained pretty stable. We should hope so too, because Marshmallow and all of his little snow geese still take residence there. You'd think Elsa would stop by to get Marshmallow. He would have been a great help against some of the forces that they came up against later in the movie. If something felt different about Elsa this time around, well, you'd be right. During the scenes where Elsa has to encounter waves bigger than most surfers would take on, pay close attention to her bottom half. 
and mainly her feet. In the first Frozen film, Elsa's feet were always covered or simply not shown. Because of this, the animators never actually made any toes for her. What you are seeing are brand new toes for the character, although they were probably plenty of Elsa dolls and figures who had toes on them. Oh well, new toes, yay! And now back to the frozen chamber of memories Elsa encounters near the end of the film. In one of the memories, she spots her mother and father hanging out by a tree. Her father reads a book, who he says is by some new Danish author. The author is a clear reference to Danish writer Hans Christian Andersen. He wrote several classic fairy tales, including the inspiration for Frozen, known as the Snow Queen. The world of Frozen comes full circle with this fun connection, even if Frozen completely changed the story around from the original tale. In the years that followed the release of the original Frozen, fans sparked so many fan theories that it honestly was really hard to keep track of. One of the more popular ones, that Anna and Elsa's parents crashed their boat, gave birth to Tarzan, and then their boat sunk to the bottom of the ocean, where Ariel the Little Mermaid discovered it. Well, we hate to be the one to burst these theory bubbles, but Frozen 2 has completely disproved this theory 100%. In the movie, Elsa and Anna discover their parents' ship in the Enchanted Forest. This is what we all get for overanalyzing a two-second scene of a ship floating in rough waters of the ocean. Ah, oh, well, it was fun while it lasted. Also, the scenes confirm that the parents are gone for good and didn't actually survive the wreckage. Brutal. While Elsa and Anna's parents may be gone for good, they got even more screen time this time around through a collection of flashbacks. In one of the scenes, their mother puts them to sleep with a small song. Watch closely as Anna's mom slowly moves her finger down from her forehead to her nose, and Anna quickly drifts off to sleep. Well, this animation there wasn't random at all. This is a very common trick parents use to trigger a child's eyes to close and fall asleep. The method is actually very common among newborns and something that many mothers probably recognized while watching the film. Now, if only this method could work as quickly as it did on Anna for all of our children. In the song Some Things Never Change, Anna talks about change and mentions how the pumpkins rot with the lyrics and the clouds are moving on with every autumn breeze. Peter Pumpkin just becomes fertilizer. The Peter Pumpkin reference is to the classic nursery rhyme, Peter Peter, Pumpkin Eater. Oddly, the nursery rhyme has connections to a 1797 publication in London and an 1825 publication in Boston, but nowhere near the lands of Arendelle. So either the moment was just a fun and random reference, or these fairy tales get passed around the globe a lot more than we thought. At least Anna didn't recite the whole poem, because the thing has some pretty dark origins as Peter has devious ideas for what to do with his wife. At the end of the first Frozen, Elsa prevents Olaf from melting thanks to a small cloud which appears above his head. People going into Frozen 2 probably wonder what happened to this magical cloud. Well, Elsa's powers definitely improved, and Anna has a quick line to showcase Olaf's permanent state. Anna mentions that Olaf was treated with permafrost. The condition obviously prevents Olaf from melting away. What an invention. The permafrost was a great way to prevent people complaining of plot hole issues with Olaf, even though he's already a magical talking snowman in the first place. As the whole gang embark on their journey to the Enchanted Forest, Olaf provides the sleigh ride entertainment by providing a bunch of facts and setting up the plotline that water holds memories. While well, between those important details, we also hear Olaf tell everyone that gorillas burp when they're happy. And he's actually not wrong. When gorillas are relaxed or at ease, they release a sound that sounds very similar to a human belch. Nice! Also, when did Olaf ever encounter a gorilla? Did the movie purposely add that line to draw another Tarzan connection and keep new theories coming? But now all the kids across the globe have a gorilla fun fact to share with their family and friends, who haven't seen the movie themselves. Sticking with the sleigh ride, we're jumping ahead to the point where Olaf and Elsa take a snooze. In that moment, Anna wants to take advantage and have a little smoochy. While the moment never actually happens, it does remind us of their sleigh ride in the first film. It makes us wonder if Kristoff has some love magic applied to his sled. The moment directly relates to the scene in the first film where Anna and Kristoff get to know each other and have a conversation about shoe sizes. Whew, this sled is so full of innuendo. Basically, if parents see a sleigh, get ready for some context that will fly right over your kids' heads. When Elsa enters the frozen area where the spirit lives, we couldn't help but draw back memories to another secret cave full of frozen crystals. Yes, Elsa's cave is a clear reference to the Fortress of Solitude from Superman lore. In Superman, the area is filled with all types of crystals, and Clark Kent even uses them to access memories and visuals of the past, including messages from his own father. Kent finds out secrets just like Elsa, and Superman even has the ability to freeze things with just his breath. Wow, this film really makes the Elsa and Superman connection stronger than ever. Hans could even be viewed as a Lex Luthor type, manipulating characters to achieve his ultimate goal of pure power. 
Before Elsa goes on her journey, they are greeted by a group of trolls who know much more than they are willing to reveal. Abby makes his big return, warning Anna about Elsa, and the animation looks even more incredible this time around. The glowing crystals on Pabby's neck return as well, filled with colors and nice little details. Pabby's glowing isn't any type of magic though. According to the Art of Frozen book, those crystals have captured the lights from the Northern Lights. The films never directly point this out, but knowing the meaning behind the crystals adds even more to what we are seeing visually on the screen. One of the funniest parts towards the end of Frozen 2 has to be when Elsa comes across the frozen statue of Hans and causes him to crumble to bits. Well, the callback to the first film was clear, but there's also a connection to Big Hero 6. In the Disney animation, there's a scene where Baymax trains with his new weapons and blasts a Hans statue to bits. Forget hidden Mickeys, we love the new animated tradition of destroying Hans statues. Keep it up. Whew! Not only did Elsa have an incredible journey, but so did we going through all of these Easter eggs and details. Any great ones that we missed, what was your favorite moment? Did you enjoy the sequel more than the original? Well, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more great content.